Miami Beach, a stone's throw away from where we are joining you from live tonight for Combate Global, another Friday night, and we're ready for some fighting. We're going to begin with a uh, feature bout in the Bantamweight division. The Bantamweight is where it's at in Combate. It's hard to get your way into the top 10 because there's so much talent. But there is a uh, talented young fighter that we have seen before, Eric Mendez, back in April. He is back. He was explosive with the first round knockout victory, and he will be. Bring you all the action. We're about to get started. Eric Mendez, great look, great hair, great talent. And Ava Nufat is coming a long way from Egyptian lineage, fighting out of Ireland. And now he's here to see if he can get his combate career off on the right foot. We're ready for the action. We're ready to take you to La Jaula, which means one thing. Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Ava Nufares. Abano Perez, anger management. That was something that he dealt with growing up. Had some weight issues and he found MMA and his problems were solved. Fights and trains, I should say, out of SBG Cork City under Liam O.G. Griffin. Uh, Patrick Dehane, one of the fighters of Combate, also in the camp. Ireland has been very good for Combate, Rodolfo. We'll see if Abano Perez is the latest to get a victory. And if you're being coached with the likes of Liam O. Griffin, you know that you're coming in with some game striking, overall well-rounded fighter in Avenue who's been just itching to get inside into the professional levels and welcome to La Jaula. Now for his opponent, let's go back to Lupe. Su rival, Eric Mendez. Eric Mendez off and running, 1-0. Rosa, we saw him. Cleaned up the hair a little bit, but he was explosive with a first round KO victory. Yes, he likes to move. He likes to, you know, to stay in front of his opponent and he's here to show again what's up. And I'd like to add right now that Eric Mendez, Anthony Pettis, former world champ, just tweeted, watch out for my guy Eric Mendez. It just shows you that this guy's taking a blessing from a former world champ. Well, he cleaned up the deja on the back. I was going <laughs> to say, is this another person? Because he no. looks so different. But guys, this is a legit prospect. This is a young man with high, high expectations. And Anthony Pettis is aware of it. And now we're going to show it to you. You get to see it firsthand. That's one of the exciting parts of watching Combate. You get to see these guys before they're stars. I'm not saying that's going to be for Mendez, but so far he has the look. Abanu Fares can change it. Both of them, early 20s. Height advantage for two inches for Mendez. He has a four inch via the reach. He came out flying the first time we saw him. We'll see if they'll do it again. We are in the Bantamweight division and we're ready for the action. Time to hand it off to the one and only La Voz, Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso gallo. This bout, three rounds in the Bantamweight division. Los jueces on the judges are Vicente Rodriguez, James Lázaro y Eliseo Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white, su peso oficial. 133 libras y un cuarto is official weight, 133 and one quarter pounds. Esta noche, dentro de la jaula, hace su debut profesional tonight, inside of la jaula. He is making his professional debut from Cork, Ireland. Abba Noob, anger management, Fares. Su contrario en la esquina roja. Vestido de rojo con blanco, his opponent in the red corner, wearing red with white. Marcó un peso oficial de 134 libras y tres cuartos. 
He registered an official weight of 134 and three quarter pounds. Entra por segunda ocasión a la jaula con récord de una victoria. He enters la jaula for the second time as a pro with a record of one victory. Fighting out of Spokane, Washington. Eric Mendez. El referee de la República Dominicana, Tommy Santana. Santana, the third inside La Jaula. Alguna pregunta, señor? Alguna pregunta? Toma aguante si desea. Back up. Abanu Fares and Eric Mendez. I don't know if uh, Mendez got the memo about Anthony's right. Pettis giving him the blessing, but I mean, that just goes in That's with a, a lot of nerves, man. That's Put you a over. blessing with a lot of clouts. Mendez in Ooh. red comes out with that sharp left jab to get it started. He's man. not wasting any time today. Mendez already connected twice with that jab that came in very heavy. So that's a good strike overhand and countering. Oh, Great what no a kick. kick, yeah. And is applying the pressure. That's what he does. He came out, shot out of a cannon in that first round victory over Javier Lozano, doing the same against Fares, who's an unknown quantity. We don't know a whole lot. This is his professional debut. Didn't have a huge amateur buildup. Parents migrated from Egypt to Ireland when he and his brother were in search of a better life. He's found a better life through MMA. He keeps running into that jab. And the way, ankle kick too, I don't know if you noticed. Yep. Fadiz's his brother is in his corner tonight. He's been in the corner for every amateur fight. Yeah, it's a great story. Good, Fadiz Good jab brother, again. Max. I think Mendez is just waiting for the right moment right now. Yep. Because he knows that as far as with his lack of experience, you know, it could be a deterrent for this. You know, he's very patient, very calm. I've seen him previously. He, he becomes very aggressive, but he's taking a different approach in this fight. Oh, that lead leg starting to get ripped up here. Mendez finding his mark. It, it just shows you that each fight you improve, you, 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 you take different strategies. You don't go uh, and use the same technique overall. You test certain things. And in this one here, starting out the fight very patient for Mendes. Fadis is staying there in the pocket, Thunder Rosa. I mean, he's obviously the, the, the striking slightly outclassed, but he's not afraid to throw. And he's, he's getting a little bit. Oh well, yeah, I mean he has to he has to be in his face because he knows if he's not he's he's gonna oh, oh, wow. that calf kick. That took yeah, he's him limping. out. He's limping. That, that he's one just limping. took Fadis out. He tries to kick off it, but there's nothing he, underneath it. Yeah, he switched the legs. He, he, he switched the lead leg. That body shot. Now he's going to for the takedown. Oh, Fadis is Mendes is not having it. Not having it. Throwing in the elbows, but Fadis needs to protect that left leg. How do you protect that leg? He's just switch stance. Yes. You gotta switch stance and check them. You're not checking them. You know, that's one thing, especially, if, of course, it happens. It's your first fight in the pro levels. But people forget you have to check oh, those kicks. Those jabs are so good. It is amazing for Mendes. Oh, good one for Fadis. So oh my God. But that, uh, that got him upset. Oh, oh see, all, no, all day. He's limping. Stop in the fight. Tommy Santana's seen enough. Wow. Upstairs, downstairs, <laughs> this kid is the real yeah. deal. Holy field. Wow, we knew that, that, that Mendes had it, man. That, that, that calf kick Sorry, has man. become so prominent lately, just connecting over and over, and, and you just see how effective it is. Mendes just found it. He's even just kind of showing you, like, hey, guys, I found it. He gave it to me. I, I just took it apart. Man. I took a wheel down. Mendes with those like, bombs that he had, for his left, and you know, that those kicks were brutal. He did not stop for the, uh, the duration of the round. Yeah, he didn't check it. He didn't check it. He left it wide open. Look at he, that, that man has to get up from his coach. Wow. That first one corner. Just, I mean, that first one killed his leg. It was yeah. gone. And, 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 and the tissue is so soft in the calf. I mean, ah. you get kicked in there. I mean, uh, it hurts when you like, get a massage and they're doing that, right, it hurts. Right, right. Imagine getting kicked. <laughs> Let's watch this again. Oh, just straight through. Although Fadis did have that game plan. He was playing the reach, throwing in some bombs, but he did not check the calf kick. Look at it right here. Boom. On. Just wide open. Didn't didn't even bother lifting up that, that lead leg at all. And he tried to switch his thunder, but it was just too little it's too late. late. Yes. And he got the other and leg no, too. And then he tried to work the inside kick. You saw that. 
Yeah. That, the, <laughs> no, he, he did both. He yeah, worked both. He went for the, for the other leg as well. Wow. How do you, I mean, those kicks come in hot, and you've got to find a way. But Mendez was a surgeon and wiped out Fares. We'll get the official decision. Eric Mendez, 2-0. Eric Mendez making quick work both times here in Combate Global and in April and now here in July. He is showing why he is a name to remember. That's what we're telling you about. Young fighters starting their careers and youth is certainly served and it doesn't matter how old you are, you can get to the top real quickly and Mendez is on a rocket ship right now. The tender stud, age of 23. Stud kid. Hats off to fight as he came a long way, took this fight. He knew he was going to be the underdog. And he stood in there, I mean, in the, past the, past the threshold pain. Yeah. But you, once you saw him, you knew it was going to be trouble. We are back, and Eric Mendez, 2-0 in Combate Global. Two first round finishes. Let's get the official decision, and Lupe. El referee Tommy Santana detiene este combate con un tiempo oficial de 2 minutos, 39 segundos del primer episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tommy Santana steps in and calls a halt to this contest with an official time of 2 minutes, 39 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by TKO, el vencedor por knockout técnico. Eric Mendez. Finding out a Spokane, a dangerous guy in a very stacked division. May see him in that next top 10, possibly in the Bantamweight, which again, has got so much talent. But how do you deny this guy? To the jab, the kicks, everything. Well-rounded fighter. We'll take a break and continue all the action here on Paramount Plus. Recap of our last fight, Abanub Fares. The latest victim of that man who went nine and two as an amateur. Hasn't been training all that long. He's just 23 years of age. We hear he wants to look for submissions, but in the two fights, he hasn't gotten near to doing that. He's been so good in the stand-up. He hasn't had the opportunity. So just imagine if he's great in the stand-up game, how good is he on the floor? And needless to say, he showed it to here inside La Jaula. Just pulverizing that leg of Fares who made his debut. I'm sure he's gonna have to go back to the drawing board, fix up a couple of things, and so that won't happen again. But you, you have to think, Thunder, if you get kicked in that, in that calf a good certain amount of time, that's gonna take you out for some time. You're gonna be uh, in the shelf for some time to heal up. Yes, man, and it was, it was just painful from the first one, and I, I don't think he could you know, withstand another one because he got hit in the other leg, not on the first leg that he was getting hit at the beginning uh, of the match. There's two places that hurt for men. We know where that specifically is, right? But it's <laughs> the calf and the inner the inner thigh ah. of your leg. Those two areas, it hurts. Ah, so you bad. don't want to talk about it. Well, Anthony Pettis was right. Check out his guy, Eric Mendes. But I hope you listened to <laughs> him early because it didn't last very long. You can see just with the volume of strikes. 33 punches, nine kicks. And that big one in the, the lead leg, and then the second one, which eventually ended it in the eyes of referee Tommy Santana. Great stuff from this uh, young man, Eric Mendez. He got a fresh. great, fresh haircut and, uh, an awesome I fight. I didn't even break a sweat, man. <laughs> I know. A little cut, but I think he'll be ready to go next week. <laughs> He'd be eager to do it. A lot of fighters already booked for future cards. We have all the action. We'll be on pretty much every Friday for the now until the end of November. Again, we'll take a quick pause, much more action. Mucha mas acción coming your way. My name is Jose Mariscal. My age is 29, I am from Cicero, Illinois. 
My nickname is uh, Machine Gun, and I got it from the fighting style that I have. My parents put me in martial arts at the age of six to learn how to defend myself. Uh, I started off with judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and then eventually ran into MMA. Uh, I've just been doing it for 23 years uh, consistently. I never took a break, never had any days off. The only time I had days off was when I broke my hand and just got right back to it and won a title fight. My favorite move is, uh, I could say, uh, a triangle or an armbar. No, I'm two different people. Obviously, the guy in the cage is you know, going out there to win and destroy. And Outside of the cage, I'm a, I'm a people person. I like to represent the people where I'm from, and then my family's from Mexico, so I like to represent them as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna win just because of my, uh, my patience, uh, the experience I have, and um, my motivation to always keep winning. He's a, for sure, a game opponent. He's, he's gonna be tough. I've seen his record, he's 12 8. He's got some finishes, some submissions, so I know, you know, this is a fight, like, I, like those are the fights I like, the uh, game opponents, guys that, you know, it's uh, gonna be a fun chess match. Just get ready to fight. Just be ready to fight. Now we hand it off. Damas y caballeros, antes de continuar con la cartelera de esta noche, queremos tomar un momento para recordar a un hombre que formó parte de la Comisión del Estado de la Florida por más de 20 años y tristemente esta semana pasada falleció a la edad de 49 años. Como es la tradición con todos esos individuos que han dedicado sus vidas a este deporte, los recordamos con los 10 campanazos. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue on with today's card, we'd like to remember a, a man who dedicated more than 20 years of his life to the Florida State Athletic Commission and sadly passed away this past week at the age of 49. As we do with all members of Combat Sports family, we remember them with the traditional 10 count. A moment of silence, please, in memory of James Meneses. May he rest in peace. Thank you. There is Miami. If you have a boat and you have a slip, well, we got some room for you. <laughs> what? The slip is for the boats. <laughs> you guys need to get out on the on your. Hi, amigo. I'm not from Miami. I'm okay. sorry. Well, I have a yacht. I just. Can't. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Wow, Max. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Mr. Didn't get the memo. Man. Gabriel Morales is back. Last time we saw him, he fought Patrick Lee Han, one of the heavy hitters in this division. This will be in the lightweight. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula. Gabriel Morales. That was not true about the yacht, by the way, as we take sure. a look at Gabriel Morales. And <laughs> when it comes to Venezuelan fighters, the gold standard, the Venezuelan vixen, Juliana Peña, who is going to be fighting next weekend. We are sending all the love and all the good vibes her way. But like many other countries in South America, MMA is growing. And these fighters individually play a big part in that growth, if Morales can get hot and win some fights, others will notice. Training here at Sanford MMA, one of the hot gyms anywhere. Now known as Kill Cliff FC, they changed their names. And we saw the last time against Patrick Lehan. Patrick Lehan, you know, it was his day. Now this is an opportunity for Gabriel to learn from that fight and see what he can bring to the jaula this time around. As for his opponent, let's go back to Lupe Contreras. Su contrario, Alexander Sanchez. 
Alexander Sanchez, an interesting prospect, started training at 19 years of age. Last fight was in October. He got choked out by Chris Renteria. Does have two submission victories on his card prior to joining Combate Global, but that was a disappointment last time out. Looking to put himself behind him. Two fighters coming off defeats, and that makes it all the more important for their MMA careers. Losing streaks, not Rent gonna keep you here on the main cards. Yeah, Renteria looking chiseled, great shape, Thunder, and plays a good role. That means you've done uh, done all the work that you have to do to prepare yeah. for this fight. Yeah, I like how Sanchez goes and kind of checks him out and be like, hey, I'm here to, I'm here to win. And Me mug him. Heck yeah! <laughs> they both had great camps. They're both in great shape. Now they have to deliver the goods inside La Jaula. We're in the lightweight division. Two-inch height advantage for the Venezolano. Two-inch reach advantage for the Mexicano. We're ready. Let's take you inside La Jaula and Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. Tres vueltas, división peso ligero. We continue with much more action this bout. Three rounds in the lightweight division. Los jueces, the judges. Ricardo Celis, Vicente Rodríguez y James Lázaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, Vestido de amarillo, introducing the blue corner, wearing yellow. Su peso oficial, 156 libras, his official weight, 156 pounds. En su séptimo combate, con tres victorias y tres derrotas, he enters la jaula for the seventh time as a pro, with three victories against three losses. Representando a Caracas, Venezuela, Gabriel Slam Morales. En la esquina roja, Vestido de rojo in the red corner, wearing red. Marcó un peso oficial de 154 libras y media. He tipped the scales at an identical 154 and one half pounds. Con un record identico de tres victorias y tres derrotas. He enters La Jaula with an identical record of three victories against three losses. Representando a México, Alexander Luna Sanchez. El referee. Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez the third inside right, the Jaula. He has the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out fighting. Judge. 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 Gabriel Morales, prior to that loss to Fight, Patrick Deane, who's one ready? of the best Fight. in those weight classes, 145, 155. He had won his last two. It is Morales in the yellow. And oh! look at this start from Sanchez. It's like, I'll take your lunch money. He sure did, he went for it. Morales now engaged. It was a clinch for a moment. Maybe a heel hook downstairs. Yeah. I mean, he has it there, might as well go for it. He's got it good. Is he tapping out? Oh, he doesn't want it. He just got to get that foot out of there. The squeeze is on. Morales. This would be remarkable. 30 seconds in for Sanchez. Morales did what he had to do. Just push that leg out. Now into the guard. The the head. Now has that guard. Worked his position. He does need to show some action. Or if not, work, work. referee Alan Abella will tell him to stand up. Do you think what an ankle hook is one of the hardest finishers the in, in MMA? Cage. It's a hard one to pull off, no? Uh, Dars. You get the Dars. You get the Twister. There's so many of them that are, that are very difficult, but ankle lock? That's to pull off. Yeah, that's complete, really. Yes. No. Only one man can pull that off, and you know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say it. Frank Mir? No. Kurt Angle. Yes. Come on, man. Hey, what's up? Now it's, uh, they're all tangled up, but it still looks like Sanchez is working He's that heel. He's ankle again. Trying to lock it in. I think Morales has got it snuffed out again this time, but still, you got to like the wherewithal from Sanchez. He is hell bent on looking for that submission. Trying to pull that leg over, spinning it all. Might have it there. Whoop. Whoop. Really working it. He yes. needs to push that leg to push himself off. There exactly. You go. There, that's what he's that doing. That is pretty exactly. cool to see that, to see the evasive maneuver there by Morales. They're back on their feet. Oh, oh good punch. Both of them. And now right hand from Morales. Right on the bike. Where is, oh! Stoned him. Stoned him with the right hand, Morales. 
Morales. Morales pulled up but that gets Lupe Perez. That's one of the victories that he had. Going for the heel again. Third time the charm. He, he's, he's, he's listening. Look at Morales tucks it away there, using his other foot to protect it. To wedge it there. Sanchez is not stopping though. Continues to roll. Yeah, back in November 2020, he KO'd Jair Perez, the right hook. So he does, does yeah. have that knockout he power, does, He's man. got a heel hook and a triangle choke in his submission victories in his still very young career. Both these wow. fighters three and three. They have been close calls in the defeats. They have fought some really good opponents along the way. And now it slows down with just over two minutes to go. Moral is still protecting that ankle. I just want to mention that it's very important when you are in those positions that you listen to your corner very carefully because sometimes you can make the littlest mistake and you can lose the fight right away. This is Thunder Rosa looks like a strategy. Sanchez says, this is what I'm going to try and do. He came out right from the bell. I think he got it. Yeah, he be amazing. Yeah, he's shifting there again. Morales needs to push that other leg and push himself off. He needs to stop worrying about that. Oh, he gets, kicks him out of the way he and he cranks it. it. He needs to maneuver his hips. See it, that right leg, put it underneath where the buttocks and push himself off because Sanchez is going to keep shifting to the to the side. And Morales is looking for yeah. Sanchez to make a mistake. I don't think he's, he's in any peril yet. He's not, not in the peril yet, but he's still cranking. Yeah. He is not going to stop. Morales is doing great. See, now he's pushing him and he has to get off. Oh. A tangle of humanity here. Sanchez is just persistent. He wants this submission victory. He's not letting go. When a way kind of like it's kind of like a rest hole. It, it could be, right? Yeah. Not doing much there. I don't think Morales is resting too much, spending a lot of energy trying to get out of this predicament. Another crank. Are they both trying to do it now? Possibly. Yeah, it's, a, it's an awkward position where they are right now. Another yeah, crank. Not, see how Morales is, has the well, He waves the it off. Yeah. He just shook his head away like, I don't want the fastball. Give me the curve. <laughs> 35 seconds to go in a crazy first round. Yes, very much so. Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah, Alan, and I, I think he might. Yeah. yeah. See how they're both shifting. It's like almost like a double submission it, it, there. <laughs> Rosa, it did turn into a rest hold. I, I'm telling you. Yes, he was. And I don't think either are complaining. No. Does now Sanchez go. go back to the ground again? Oh, oh, look at Morales go! By the way, Sanchez has got to take it to the Pure ground because Morales work. is a striking hey, machine. Sanchez is groggy. He, oh, oh, he's, he's laid. Can he survive this round? Takedown. Oh. We get to the end of an explosive opener. Well, now we know part of the reason Alexander Sanchez wanted to take this to the ground because Morales in the stand-up, mighty dangerous. He packs a punch. Just from the start, Morales was swinging away, displaying his stand-up game, but Thunder, Sanchez kept searching for that submission. It just wasn't there. No, he Morales didn't. found any way to protect himself, and he surely did. If it wasn't for that bell, I, I don't know where Sanchez would be right now. He got saved. I was like, where's the bell? Where's the bell? Because he's about to go down. Wow. It was a little dangerous. And he just turned up the juice there towards the end of that round. Just went all out. A clash of styles in that opening round. Alexander Sanchez trying to get things finished on the ground while on the feet, Gabriel Morales had his fist doing all the talking. Sanchez is a submission specialist, but the same can be said for Morales. I think he'll be content here, Thunder Rosa, to stay on the feet as long as possible. Sanchez now firing. Oh, caught it with the left. Sanchez has to do a better job on defending. Good three bombs. Yes. I, I, yeah, he's going down again, trying to get takedown, because again, on the stand up, it's not looking very good. I'll be curious to see if he goes again for the heel hook. If he has that opportunity. But Morales here needs to land some of those hammer fists. Oof. 
use those forearms for some shots, some body shots as well, uh, Thunder. Yeah, Sanchez in a, comp in a compromising position, especially if Mr. comes out with those bumps anywhere. Maybe even uh, some real, oh, there he goes, setting up perhaps for a triangle choke. See how he wrapped around the legs. Also an oh, arm yes. bar. Or an arm bar opportunity. I mean, so many chances here to get a submission, but Morata's very smart. See here he puts his hand behind Watch Sanchez's head. Yes. Watch not allowing it for Sanchez to grab it. Keep working, keep Warning working. there for Sanchez. There's the open scoring, guys. And Morales got all three judges. Oh, he's, he's turning. He's trying to go yeah. for the armbar. Morales needs to be cautious. If he, if Sanchez pulls up his hips, extends it real quiet, keep working, Morales keep can be in, 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 prob in a problem here. Watch the back of Morales the has a black belt in slam, which yet. stands for well-rounded martial artist. It's a style in Venezuela created by his father's academy. His father, a big name in Venezuelan mixed martial arts. Uh, Sanchez has to be uh, uh, very patient because if there's a move, he can he can pull the armbar on this position very easily. Yeah, right here, he has to be cautious. It's almost like he's walking in on eggshells. He yes. has to be very cautious what he does because Sanchez is just waiting for that opportunity to catch an arm, wrap legs around for triangle chokes, anything can happen. Another warning, he said he'll take a point away for Sanchez with a hit in the back of the head. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's the way that Morales is coming in. See how he dodges his head down? Yes. Sanchez throws elbows. He doesn't intentionally want to hit the back of the head, but it's the, the way that Morales is coming in. Yeah, it's the position that they're yeah. in, and that's that's what can happen. But, you know, when you're there, you just either want to get out or want to defend it, and, and sometimes they deduct points for that. But see, but for Morales, so he should, he's not landing any forearm shots to the face. The chances are there. Some hammer fists, too. It's more like he's laying his shoulders on the chest of chances. But he's not landing shots. Look at it. Nope. Sanchez, like by the way, warned again. Yeah. He might be close to losing a point, which would be catastrophic after losing the first round, according to all judges. Sanchez is not really doing much. I know he's trying to grab the arm, but Morales is not giving it. No. He keeps moving. He's defending it very, very well. Again, they, they have to listen to their corners at this point because both of them are in a position. There it is. Now he's landing some shots. Morales is landing some shots, but they're not coming in with power. Speaking of the red corner, we're being told by those ringside that they are telling Sanchez to fight for your mother, fight for your father, fight for your dog, fight for everything. Wow. For the, even for the dog, guys, that's, that's, it's that's desperate. everything, yes. It, it, it tells you, Thunder Rosa, how much is at stake for these fighters. You know, you win here, you got a winning record, you're in good shape. You lose, you got to hold your breath and wonder what is next. Yes. There are the stats. Heavy advantage on the striking there for the Venezolano Morales. And we've seen it too when he's on the stand-up, he's dropping some bombs on right on the pipe a couple times. He definitely rocked Sanchez, and uh, he almost won on the first round. And it's been some time that we've seen these boys on the ground. Morales again needs to position his hips, land some shots, but again, he has to be cautious because Sanchez can wrap around those legs, get a triangle, or get the armbar possibility. Morales cradling Sanchez, very unorthodox move here. Yeah, he can't really do much, and plus the howl is in the, in the way. Now, Morales has to quickly turn around and get out of this position. Wow. It's a very uh, perplexed <laughs> position, to say the least. And a warning now for Morales about holding the cage. So if somebody, if we can get out of a clean there fight we here without any point deductions, it would be something. Sanchez is up go. to it. Now he got the up kick, Max, and Thunder. Yeah, and right there. Oh, there it is. Get in the face. There it is. There it is. You got to be careful. Sanchez up again. He's going to push him off again. See how he's setting it up? Seconds. Right positioning in the hip air. This is a bizarre fight, but you can't turn away. I mean, you can't put your finger on this one, as you see. <laughs> but honest, looks like he just woke up from a, a long sleep. Hair all messed up. <laughs> Yeah, it was wild, <laughs> to say the least, wild. Yeah, let's I take mean, a look here. I've never seen anything quite like this. <laughs> Extremely entertaining. Uh, yeah, it was back and forth, though, right from the stand-up. It opened up. I thought that it was just going to continue on 
with the stand-up game, but somehow it turned it out to be on the ground for Sanchez. That's where he wanted this fight to take over. And then we were in some pretty awkward positioning here. And, and I have to also say that for the defense, the holla's in the way, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we talk about cage psychology. Oh, wow. Look at that up kick right there. You called it before it happened. Yeah. We are back. Morales eager to get back in the fighting. We've had it all. He had an up kick. We've had three attempts at a heel hook. We've had two warnings from the referee about punches to the back of the head, holding the fence. We've had some good stand up. You know, people talk about psychology and the fight game, but they, they don't they don't think about the positioning of where you are in the howler, where you are and how you use it to your advantage. And Thunder, you know how. For for example, if you're in a situation where you you want to have you want to be you want to be as close as you can to your corner because you're able to hear your corner. Yes. Yes. That's ring or or how the psychology. Yeah, how and, and, and for like for Sanchez, it's very important to be by his corner because he's been struggling a right. lot during the whole entire fight. Right, because Morales is coming with all the the punches, and when he gets a little flustered, then Picked. he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, now he's gonna, Sanchez is going to try and sit on top. Mar yeah. Morales has got to keep his stand up, but once again, he's finding it very difficult to stay that way. He got that ankle pick from Morales, and now back in the same position that we were towards uh, most of that second round. Sanchez has got to watch that foot as Morales starts to maneuver around to try and maybe get yeah. some side control, but be leery of that arm. Look at that arm. All right, Morales Pivots. needs to whip, just take that, that arm out like if you were pulling a lawnmower. It's out. There we go. Now he's going to take side control, probably. More like a quasi it's more like crucifix. A, yeah. Whoa, that's dangerous, guys. Well, he, he needs to. Because you have, you can't defend anything. Once your arms are trapped, you he, are done. And he's in a good position because look where his feet is, right next to the hala. He can actually use it to post. He extends that arm and then just extends the other one. And you're right, just, just land the shots. Side control to Major Tom. Morales has won the first two rounds, according to all three judges. Well, but see, Morales is not doing anything here. Sanchez's face is wide open. He said, take some shots. Even Alan Abella is telling him to keep working. Well, warning for that elbow, too. And the, Again, the, to the back of the head. Yes, the corner of Sanchez is telling him, don't let him mount you. Don't let him mount you. Because once he mounts you, it's ground and pound, guys. Well, and Morales is a good striker. Well, Sanchez, that's why he has that. It's how he had that leg up, that the knee. You see how he's doing that? Yeah, he's defending. That's how he's defending right now. It's blood coming off the face there of Morales, who uh, studied two years of engineering at UNEXPO in Venezuela. I can't imagine how tired Sanchez is feeling right now, being there defending and trying not to get submitted or not to get, you know. And Thunder, you know how tough and exhausting it is to be a, a bottom person. Yes, it's horrible. And when you just keep bridging and bridging and it doesn't work, or you, you extend your hips and it doesn't work, it's so exhausting. Yeah, it's just, it's your, your breathing has to be on point, your mental has to be on yeah, point, yeah. And, and it's like when you're on those moments, you feel like you're drowning. It's like you, you freak out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So that's why the mental game, and as I call you, you were talking about, was very, very important. Modales, who lost to Patrick Lehan, prior to that, he won two fights. Prior to that, uh, he lost to Ayer Perez. Yep. Another uh, big name in the uh, lightweight division. That was back in November of 2020. Ben is, by the way, 7-2 and two right now. Has won his last four. And the fight continue on the ground. And Morales continue to punish the body as the same time Sanchez continues to defend. Not much here from... And again, Sanchez tries to set it up here. See how he's setting it up, wrapping yes. up the leg. The arm is down. He does have it. He does have something working here, guys. All three rounds have ended in these entanglements. See how he's, he's trying to push that, that head down as well. But he's setting it up. Well, he has to be careful because he continues to hit Morales in the back of the head. Right, right. And the ref is not having it. And he's already been warned twice. No, like three times already. Well, he's gotten away with murder with that one. <laughs> well, Sanchez is uh, 
Messed it up a bit here, but he is frustrated, Morales, but he needs to finish the fight after losing the there first two rounds. See, see now the triangle's it? locked oh. in. There it is. He just had to squeeze, though. He's not squeezed. doesn't have that, that opening there to squeeze really well and tight. He's connecting with these punches yeah. repeatedly. Yeah. I mean, he has control right there. And if you do, might as well start to score some points. But he's got Thunder Rosa. He's got to make a move here. Has to. And remember, it's open scoring, so his corner can tell him that he's down two rounds to none. There he is. See, Sanchez is doing what he needs to do, pushing in the head down, extending the hips. This is his only bet. And then holding on to that arm as well. When, well, you're, when you're caught in that position, you can feel the and pressure. And he oh. might switch to the arm, but the thing oh. is that he's he's too close to the, the howler. That's and making it hard. And Kimura. then Kimura puts the ability. Oh, oh, no. oh, just seconds oh. remaining, oh, but there's the man. Oh. So close. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Morales dodged one there at the end because it looked like Sanchez had a real good hold of that arm. It was appear that the Venezuelan is going to get his arm raised. We'll get the official decision when we return. Every, every time I see those, it just makes me cringe when I see an American or the yeah. other. Uh, oh. It is. I mean, we have uh, some some memories that we have to digest when we see, remember that. Part of that Pitbulls camp, he gets a big, warm embrace. Didn't, doesn't look like it's his day, but he put in a good effort, and he made this really interesting. He really did, and, and Morales show his, do, uh, his dominance on the stand-up game in this, in this fight. Morales in the stand he has the power. You know, if he would have kept on going in the in the striking and worked that, because Sanchez was coming was coming in a little wild. So just Morales said a little bit more crisp, go inside and work the body. <laughs> Look at Max here. I think Max is telling us how to put the. Joining out of fish. Yeah, Morales fight. had to do, no, yeah. No, or, so he has Max had a little bit of, of my cake, you know? Yes. Happy that birthday, sugar. Thunder Rosa. That sugar. That sugar. Got that little sugar. The Not northern. <laughs> past the sugar. <laughs> a little bit of the northern cone here. We have Venezuela and Colombia and Ecuador. Of course, Brazil, which is a, a, a monster when it comes to mixed martial arts. Some of that know-how certainly can slip to other parts as we see Alexander Sanchez exhausted. He, he approached it a little differently. Is Hopefully that, we can see him back. And is that what honestly? He's tired, and rightfully so, in a, uh, a catch-as-catch-can style fight there. And Gabriel Morales, I'm sure his father will be very proud of him. This is a, a big decision we're about to hear. We are back here inside of the Jaula, and this could be a huge decision for Venezuelan MMA. Gabriel Morales, it would appear, will get his arm raised. To Lupe Contreras. Después de tres vueltas, los jueces están de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas. De 30 a 27 after three rounds. The judges turn in identical scores of 30 to 27 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. A favor del vencedor, por decisión unánime. De Venezuela, Gabriel. Slam Morales! Celebrate Caracas, Maracaibo, Carabobo. You got a winner here, and Patrick Lee Han was his defeat, but other than that, three wins out of four for Gabriel Morales. Except for this young man, getting to sharpen up there on that jiu-jitsu game. And Sanchez is a young dude too, Max and Thunder. I'm sure we'll see him here again. Yeah, I think he has a lot to go back, you know, on the scoring board and see what he did, how, how I guess he started too eagerly, and that's that, that was his downfall. Yeah, just tighten up those shots. Don't, don't, don't leave those open gaps where your opponent can strike. And you know what, also, not waste too much time on certain stuff that are not working. Okay. What do you think? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of the excitement out too there. Too much cake for you Yeah, too, too much cake. 
We'll take a quick break. We're getting closer to the main card here, Combate Global on Paramount Plus. Combate Global continues to have a rip roaring 2022. Competed yeah. um, in La Jaula, but you, you, and look, he was going here for the Cremora, but it was just too little, too late. Almost a but, grandstand finish from a very yeah. industrious Alexander Sanchez. But the difference is, um, Thunder, you fought in an arena, you hear the loud, the cheers. Here you have that chance in the studio to actually hear your corner, which is a, it's a great opportunity for the fighter. I mean, it is, but when, even when you're, there's a lot of people and you're concentrated, you can't even hear the people talking or the people are cheering or anything. The only thing you're focusing on is your opponent and in your corner. Yeah, it's almost like the only thing you hear is your breathing. Pretty much. <laughs> it's hard to hear, if, even in a loud audio, auditorium and loud stadium, even if it's empty, it's hard to hear all the coaching, especially when you're getting tired. Mm -hmm. Although Morales was able to persevere, you could see why he was getting, it may not have been, when you look at the scorecards, 37-27, that's a bit unfair to Sanchez, but in real reality, Morales won all three rounds. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he was he was the the, the more 100 percent aggressor. He uh, was the aggressive. fighter that, yes. that, that was aggressive. Uh, again, his striking was on point. And on the ground, he was the one that was more transitioning and getting getting out of those positions where he could have submitted, which you know did enough for these judges to award him. The we saw Javier Reyes, who's Colombian, and how his uh -huh. fighting got better. And yeah. you put Morales in the same sort of category because. Training in Venezuela, you're not going to get the training you get here in the United States. And he hasn't really tried that, but maybe that awaits him. And maybe you have a eureka moment. And all of a sudden, he, he can get on an absolute trajectory like Javier Blair Reyes. Yeah. But remember with Javier, he, he traveled to all these different countries to hone his skills. And whatever he learned there, he brought to Colombia. So a Some, little bit of something. Something for Morales to target in the future. We are heading towards the top of the hour, which means our main card. And we have some cracking fights coming your way. Combate Global, live on a Friday night.
La Hala waiting three more fights coming your way as we pass the midnight hour here on the East Coast. Wherever you are watching, glad to have you on board. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, and Thunder Rosa. As we recap our opening fight and a real marker laid down by Eric Mendez. Rodolfo read the tweet from Anthony Pettis. He said, keep an eye on this guy. He's hard to miss Man, with that you, talent. When you get a blessing from a former world champ, I mean, you got to bring it up and show why you get that blessing. And he surely did it here tonight, just demolishing his opponent, Faris, right from the start, eating that left leg, that left calf. Oh, making was, this limp. It's like I had a flat tire in the middle of the fight, in the start of the fight. Was, Thunder Rosa, it was debilitating, and then he went there again, and it was over. It was debilitating to see it, too. I was, and I was in so much pain for the poor guy, man. I mean, he was like an, like a sharp iron cutting. Oh, look at that. Flesh. Yeah, the uh, lumberjack. Guy 99 problems in him. What is it? <laughs> He's brushed it off. I know. Mendez, who uh, he cut, cut the hair, cut the locks. Didn't seem to stop him as he ripped right through Abat Noob Fares, who came over from Ireland, part of the SBG gyms, which has uh, provided some real good talent here for Combate Global. And for Fares, we'll have to go back to the drawing board, see what's next. But he fought a real killer here this evening. Great savage in that young man, Eric Mendez. I'm sure we'll see him very, very soon inside La Aula. Two wins for two to start his professional MMA career. There is the Queen of the North, Katie Saul, comes in to take on Gloria Gloriosa Bravo from Chile. And the, they always say, son de abajo, from the south, la reina del sur. It's the battle of the queens. It's the battle of the queens, north versus south. Coming your way, pick your sides. And that'll get our main card off and running. That'll be in the Atomweight division, a sneaky good area for combate fighters and then also coming your way jose mariscal the man now called machine gun, machine gun. chepe machine gun chepe that Ooh, that's a good, good one, yeah, that's man. A cool man chepe <laughs> machine gun especially if you say it like that yeah yeah you gotta have that accent in there <laughs> <laughs> it's a chepe machine gun and we have eric oh no, Paul Jordan, beltran. Paul beltran. he knows where the camera is El Toro. Strikers MMA, that's the gym that he runs. So he's a businessman, he's a fighter, he's father. A father. Yeah, he's an all around type of dude. And a husband. And I wouldn't call him Shaggy. He's got that. <laughs> <laughs> My guy, Jimmy Sandstorm Sandler. My man. Looking for a third straight win. <laughs> I, I think you he heard it because he's smiling. He did. <laughs> hey, it's a great look. It's a great look, and that's how you differentiate yourself. You got to market yourself. You are your own brand. And how about Eric Betty Montano? He cut his hair. Yeah. It's a tough one to crack as well. That is coming your way. The main card, the bull. Woo. With some heavy hands. This guy, champion machine gun Mariscal, is no joke either. Our main card away, Saul, Bravo, Mariscal, Beltran, Sandlin, and Montano. Combate Global heads towards the main card. Important fights, you are almost guaranteed some fireworks. We will be there to call all the action. Join us at the other end of the midnight hour out east. Combate Global, live from Miami. Mi nombre es Jordan Beltrán, eh, soy de, de Puebla, México, y tengo 32 años. Bueno, una cosa me llevó a la otra. Empecé haciendo boxeo, y después conocí amigos que hacían Muay Thai, que hacían lucha, y, y bueno, eventualmente empecé a practicar todas. Conocí que había una forma de combate, ¿no? Que era las artes marciales mixtas, y después, bueno, me especialicé en ello, ¿no? Mi estilo de pelea actual es, eh, pues, Sí, agresivo, me gustan mucho los golpes. Mi pelea perfecta es a puro golpe. Eh, lo que me hace diferente de mis oponentes, quiero ganar, voy a ganar, pero disfruto todo. Eh, soy una persona diferente dentro de la jaula y fuera. Fuera me considero una persona tranquila, 
eh, y bueno, dentro debo de ser eh, pues una persona agresiva, debo de ser explosivo también en algunos movimientos. Mi sumisión favorita, creo que tengo dos, pero eh, he ganado muchas peleas eh, con guillotina. Mi rival le dicen el Chepe, eh, he revisado peleas de él, creo que, creo que es muy completo, ¿no? Sí, claro, tengo que ganar esta pelea, quiero, quiero más de combate. Pues nada, vamos a divertirnos, Chepe, vamos a dar una, una buena pelea. Me molestan mucho las peleas aburridas, entonces espero que, que vengas con ánimos de dar show. Miami, the venue, all here long for Combate Global. Big plans certainly to hit the road in 2023. Much more to come on that as it is a global brand. We are here at the top of the hour for our main card where when the midnight hour strikes, crazy things happen inside La Jaula. Guaranteed. Three fights coming your way. Three unique divisions, six talented fighters. Looking to get everyone to talk about them come Saturday morning. We will be on just about every Friday for the remainder of the year, at least through November. This is the place to be on Paramount Plus and our global audience. We had record numbers tune in last Friday in, on TUDN and Univision and Televisa, as well as here Paramount Plus. We're a big part of it. And if you're tuning in, love to have you. Glad you could join us. Tell a friend. Let them know what they're missing. We'll get to the action here. My name is Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, and Thunder Rosa. We will Hola. Hola, everyone. Hola. Es Hola. Es the birthday plan. girl. Es oh, that's plan. it. The party's over. Sorry. It is no longer not the for, birthday. Not for Max. Max has been dancing. You should have seen not, him dancing. Now, not in the Pacific <laughs> time, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. I got some news for you. We're in Hawaii. We're on the Eastern <laughs> Standard Time. <laughs> Jose Mariscal, Jordan Beltran, Jimmy Sandlin with a huge opportunity to make a name for himself with three straight wins at the expense of Eric Betty Montaño. But coming up first, Katie Saul to take on Gloria Bravo. Adam Waite division, everyone looking at a shot for Ana Palacios, including the Canadian, Katie Saul. Let's get to know. The displaced Irish woman, she gets ready for Gloria Bravo. Uh, my nickname is the Queen of the North, somewhat self-proclaimed. How I envision tonight going is um, establishing an early lead, but being very patient. I know she has experience and is coming to win. When I go in there, it's important to realize, like, give her nothing. My name is Gloria Bravo, I'm from Chile. Estoy entrenando hace muchos meses para pelear. Creo que va, voy a mostrar el trabajo que he hecho. Otra Gloria, otra gloriosa. Given that Gloria is ranked number two, I don't feel any pressure. I think it's the other way around. She's supposed to beat me, and I don't believe that she will. Oh, me siento muy, muy contenta de estar en el número dos, pero obviamente no estoy satisfecha. Quiero ser la número uno. Vamos, con todo. Um, I don't have any, any animosity. I just think it's going to be really fun. Vamos a aprender la jaula y que recuerde que hay una sola reina. Y esa reina es la reina del sur. That is coming up here shortly. We go head to head. Both experienced fighters. Both have fought some important fights for some big companies. One inch height advantage for Saul. All even on the reach. Bravo going overweight here for the 105 limit. It's going to have to fix that. She'll lose some of the purse to Katie Saul. Katie Saul looking to knock out number two in the Adam Weight rankings. We're ready to get you back inside La Jaula. We hand it off to Lupe Contreras. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este es el duelo coestelar de esta noche en la división peso paja. This is our co-featured bout of the evening in the strawweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Eliseo Rodríguez, Ricardo Celis y Vicente Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un... Combate Global! Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red, 
marcó un peso oficial de 105 libras y media. She registered an official 105 and one half pounds. En su décimo combate a nivel profesional, con cuatro victorias y cinco derrotas, she enters la jaula for the 10th time as a pro, with four victories against five losses, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland. The Queen of the North, Katie Saul. Su contraria en la esquina roja, vestida de azul, her opponent in the red corner, wearing blue. Su peso oficial, 109 libras, her official weight, 109 pounds. En 11 combates, mantiene un récord de 6 victorias y 5 derrotas. En 11 pro bouts, she maintains a record of 6 victories against 5 losses. Representando a Santiago de Chile, Gloria, Gloriosa Bravo. El referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. Referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. And it's Bigote, the third, inside La Jaula. Oh, is that for real? And it's Bigote, the third? Back to your corner. Back to your corner. <laughs> I can coin a phrase. Max, Who wrote this? Max, you are on fire tonight. That's right. Friend. It's for your birthday. Yeah, I want to give you more sugar. <laughs> We're ready. Katie Saul in red, repping Canada. Originally, her family from Ireland to take on Gloria Gloriosa Bravo. Chilean. Look, 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 at, yeah, look at the Katie. She's a southpaw. The previous fight that I saw, she. With time, she will put her hands down, and she has a very unique stance, but at this time around, she has her hands up. Katie's uh, super focused. Look at her. Checking kicks, too. Gloria does have that kickboxing background. She says she's felt very comfortable now with her ground game. She's been training at the Barrio Franklin gym in Chile. Woo. Two straight wins for Bravo in her six victories overall, four via submission. Oh. Has fought at 115 pounds in straw weight, but trying to make men's meet here in the 105 ranks and get another shot at Ana Palacios. Katie has some power in that left straight. He's coming in, setting it up with that right jab. Pardon me, Rolo, yeah, originally ahead. from Winnipeg. Yep. Two submission victories of her own, including a victory in January over Tamika Jones and Invicta and Armbar. Oh, good left oh, hand. Beautiful. And by the way, she's been really inspired by that last victory. It's funny, Thunder Rosa, yes. uh, after hitting some bad patches, to get a big win against a good opponent, you just get all that wind back in your sails. Oh. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you start believing in yourself again, right? When you get a lot of losses on the row, like, your mind fucking scams on you. Katie defeated Tamika Jones recently. That was her last victory. Tamika Jones actually competed here in, uh, in the Howla, Max, in Thunder. And Thunder, you know, when you take on a southpaw, you, you have to train with a southpaw. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, you, you have, have to. to. So the I, was, to, I was just gonna say there was one of the girls in my in my training camp. She was a southpaw, and now like again, when you are not very experienced, you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how how to like you it know. It throws you completely off. It throws you, off, off. Completely. It throws you completely off. Yes, and it really I, does. I see it. There's a couple things she does, like a very annoying little things with the right, 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 right. And she hits the the left, right. So it's it's, it's interesting to to train with somebody like that. Bravo keeps moving towards her left, trying to get out of that sweet spot where Saul can deliver, but she just did there a big boot to the midsection. We're creatures of habits, and when you get used to sparring with someone that's orthodox, and then they switch it on you the day of the fight, Saul you know, gets out important. of there. 42 boxing fights for Saul. Training in SPG Ireland with John Cavanaugh, which is the place where Conor McGregor trains. An Irish success story. Ireland looking to create some more of that nature. Well, Katie's using very well as her reach. She's really using that towards her advantage. And I think Gloria just hasn't been able to really move in. Now she is. See how she keeps moving in forward to cut that reach? Peppering with that right hand. Two minutes, Katie. I'll yeah. try to work on those low kicks too, uh, Thunder. You know, Katie, she's the, she's the taller of the two, your longer legs. Yes. Break her down. Oh, why she gonna go for the ground game? Okay. Might get herself in trouble. That's the that's the domain of Bravo. Bravo said that she has been a lot more confident yes. in the ground game. She did get that submission. Improve. Recently here in La Jaula. Oh. 
Good right hands. I mean, and I'll tell you, see, for, for me, yes. my, my bread and butter is wrestling. I'll, I'll trade, but when I get when I get a little overwhelmed, I'm gonna go to the ground. <laughs> you know, so you, you gotta go through uh, what you feel more confident with. Yes, absolutely. And Thunder Rosa, you see, like someone who wants to take it to the ground. Bravo wants to take it to the ground. There's the right time to do it. Maybe not right this second because Saul's keeping oh, her motor go. going. Capturing that leg. I the, love how she grabbed the leg and she just pushed it back to the to the right, cage. Right. But but see at the same time I would have kept that leg and you could use that leg to sweep her and take her down. She might not feel like that was the moment. She wanted to do something else, you know. Very competitive opening round. We're under a minute to go. Oh, Bravo exchange. Bravo coming in. She's founding that opening. Something to notice about Bravo is like she's like slow, 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 and then she has like a, a burst oh, of energy. Oh, great teeth. Great teeth to push off Bravo. Saul keeping a distance. Yeah. Comes over the top with the left hand. Yeah. And great there body work. Yeah, she's using, see how she's, uh, Katie's landing those shots in the midsection? They'll take out your breath. Slow you down. Bravo, back-to-back -back victory. September of last year beat Irlanda Galindo versus a, a unanimous decision. September, two weeks earlier that year, beat Jay Durand via an armbar. It was July of last year she fought Ana Palacios losing in a second round key lock. That'll end the first round. It was a good one. So what do we got here? Gloria Bravo and her husband in her corner, Christian Barasa. Corner there, uh, Katie. Let's take a look at the replay here. Katie in with those long legs, using that beautiful Muay Thai technique kick as she's using, standing on the toes, shifting of the hips, using that reach, and then Gloria just finding an opportunity for her to, to go in and cut her, but Katie pressuring her, pinning her to the howl. Blowing in that inside kick, Thunder, but great footwork, great movement from Katie. Yes. And, and Bravo just needs to be more persistent going in. We are back here, round number two, a promising start for the queen of the north, Katie Saul. Los de abajo, Gloria Gloriosa Bravo just couldn't catch up. With the Canadian, Ready? certainly came close. Ready. Cornered by her husband, Christian Barasa, as we were pointing out, who will be fighting next week here on Combate Global. Ooh, great kick there from Gloria to start off in the midsection of Kate, Katie. Yeah, we, they both are using the, the kicks to That's defense, kick. right? Yeah. And to set things up, yes. to get yes. a little closer in the case of Bravo. Right, because if, if you do, if you're able to kick in the mid area automatically right your opponent yes. will crunch you know crunch down and then that's when you can able to work in go for a takedown lay some flurry of punches official scoring is going to be interesting here i would imagine katie soul's got a claim for that first round bravo's been active but struggling to get close enough to try anything to get it on the ground here it is and it is split oh, it goes bravo's way Whoa. wow Okay. Interesting. Well, I, I think I think what you saw there is that she she was connecting more. You might, the, the thing that throws it, yeah. The, the, what, the, how did you see it? You're, you're a little yeah. perplexed. Well, here's the thing. Kate, what, what's getting you away with Katie is the movement. She moves too fast. She, so she, you know, if you look at it, it seems like it. But when, when Bravo shoots, she strikes. Does not, might not be throwing as much as Katie, though. No, but when she throws her combination, combinations are like one, two, three kick, one, two, three kick. Sometimes he, she, she connects more than, you know, than Katie. Either way, it's great news for Bravo because right. the judges like what she's doing. And she has been active and she continues to pepper right. away. You would imagine at some point she will make the breakthrough. Yeah, see, she, she moves in and she lands her two, three shots and then she moves out because Katie just moves around. Yes. So I think that's what the judges are looking at here. 
If I were Katie, I'll attempt another takedown as she did previously in that first round. But finish it. She couldn't finish it last time around. And that's the thing. When you go for the takedown, any coach will tell you, you got to finish the takedown. See, Katie keeps landing, but, she, but Bravo is blocking it. She has her hands up. Gloria Bravo, who has fought the who's who in combate, including back in the day in November of 2017, Super Meli Martinez fought Paulina Granados. That was in April 2019. She has logged a lot of time here with combate. Combate, in fact, this is her sixth fight. Next yep. fight with Combate, it is her 12th overall. Bravo needs to come in. She needs to keep coming in as she's doing, landing in the shots. Because automatically, once you shoot, Katie's she's not she's she's not too much of a counter puncher. No, you know she moves not. out. She moves. Maybe she doesn't feel comfortable doing a counter punch. You know. Saul connects there with the left. Two minutes left, Katie. Keep that going. The corner for Saul, very optimistic, like what they're seeing. This is a fighter who started her career three and one. Has hit a couple snags along the way. Straight kick there from Bravo. Yes. Doubling up on the kicks. That hurt her to the body, Katie. What up? What up? The third kick. More teeps, yep. Her corner's telling her to do that, and she's listening. There you go again. Yeah, and 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 she, she, she need, yeah there's, but she needs to keep using the teep. It's working for Katie. Yeah, see, she has to, see how she's she's using the teep to keep her off, to keep her off, to keep her off. It seems to be frustrating, Bravo. It's softening her up here in the second round. I mean, it will frustrate me too. Man, when it's you working. meet someone, when you have a good teep, it's very frustrating, oh especially God. if you're that striker that loves to come inside. Yes. Oh, man. And if they get you right on the spot, on the sweet spot, I was man. about to add on, there's a, there's a trick here. All right, you didn't hear it from me. But let me, let me tell you, when you use that teep, Max, and you're able to use that toe, hmm. and you're able to dig hmm. it in there? Hmm. Yeah, buddy. Hey. We'll have a combo tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's been working for Saul. Now Bravo stems the tide. It was a great start for the Chilena, but she is maybe second best here in the back end of round number two. Saul continues. Yeah. That has to be her MO for the rest of this round. Yeah, and, and again, the teep is just great to push her off. She's gonna crunch it, and you have to. You, but you have to quickly move and strike. That hurt Bravo because that lasts for just a, you know a short time. Yeah, capitalize on it. It's one second and pop, pop, pop. Right. Maybe land in some elbows, some shots. It hasn't been able to go to the ground, and Bravo needs it to go to the ground. Her, her submission skills elite combining. Just can't get within reach of Saul, and we're now here with 15 seconds in round two. I might have to give her some sugar so she can bring it or up. Pass the sugar. <laughs> Final seconds of round two will be interesting how the judges score this one. It means everything as we head into round three. We are getting ready for round number three. We have the number two ranked Adam Wade in Gloria Bravo in blue. In all likelihood, will not remain number two if she is defeated here. Has to come up with a big third round. Doesn't have to knock out Saul. Doesn't have to finish Saul. Has to win this round. Yeah, curious to see how the judges awarded this round. That felt closer. I feel yeah, like Saul had the edge. Closer. Thunder yeah. Rosa, how did you see that second round? Uh, it, it was it was close, man. But uh, again, Bravo couldn't finish her her combos because, like I said, you were saying, uh, uh, Katie moves so much. Yeah. There you go. The Whoa! Down. Okay, but look at she held down to that. Oh, she almost into that. the guard. Hey, if she doesn't <laughs> watch her punches, the ref are gonna be. <laughs> look at that. Look at look how Gloria has that right arm trapped. Well, she had it. She's just trying to trap an arm. That's how she submitted Jay Duran Max for that arm submission. She needs to, Katie needs that, to be careful. We saw that also Ana Palacios who got into that situation yeah. was able to put that arm bar. And now a good squeeze from Bravo. Saul has to approach this. Whoa. Very cautiously, Saul winning round two. We are all level, so wow. it all comes down to this third round. Indeed. So if Bravo is smart enough, she needs to finish it. One of the scores had Saul winning the first round, and that judge had Bravo winning the second. The other two had Saul winning the second. So judges seeing this fight very differently. Differently, yeah. 
Make something work. Yes. Yeah, those are good shots. Give me a big left elbow. Pause Saw that. the high ground. They're calling for the elbows. No, you elbow. Well, 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 you know, one of those elbows can again. cut you deep. Again. And but but Katie's landing in some nice hammers. See see how how in that scramble, Gloria was just looking for. Oh, there's a dark triangle. Oh, 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 oh. Stretch stretching it. Now the arm She's got the too. triangle around the neck of no. Saul pivots. Katie doing exactly what she had to do. Nice. Just pull away. Transition. Great transitioning. Yep. And then now she gets the, the back. back. She can go for a mata leon right now. But she's right next to La Haula. Bravo, very good in defending these submission attempts and making it a submission attempt of her own. Looking for the wrist control underneath. Right, so Gloria's pushing away, grabbing that wrist to throw her over, but Katie wrapping those big long legs, figure fouring her, her body. Now she's transitioned again. It's a very nice scramble right now. Gloria now does have a great opportunity here. She was able to grab a, well, she did have an opportunity to grab the arm and use the holla to push off and position herself with her hips, but not right now in this position. Now peppering fist there from Bravo, but Saul still remains on top and dropping that weight, making Bravo uncomfortable. Halfway through this final round, winner takes all here in round three. Katie landing him some elbows, some hammer fists, some shots. Work and keep going. Nice. Ooh. It's all staying active. That makes all the difference. Oh my God. Yeah. I remember being in those positions before. Jeez, you're like really trying to defend, trying to go for something. She's done really well defending yes. any. But uh, Saul, speaking of Saul, defending any potential submission attempt. Bravo's got nothing right now. And I think it's to the positioning thunder where she is right now. It, it, it's hard. You just have to wait for Katie to make a mistake to, to leave an, a, an arm loose or be able to, to wrap your legs around for a triangle. Something. He's pushing her back. Yeah. For right now, it's going to benefit for Gloria to go to the top and just try to finish this fight. She has to push the pace. She has a minute and a half, and there she is. There she goes. Take down. Oh! Another takedown. So we'll get credit for that. Man. She's so in. very confident with those takedowns. Hey, you had to do what you got to do if you want to finish this. Beautifully executed, as we see there, the real-time stats, Max. Plenty of punches. Bravo. One last attempt, perhaps, for a grandstand finish via the submission. Saul is defending it so well, though. And the two takedowns probably put Saul in the driver's seat. And as we've been talking about, Bravo has done a lot. She's thrown a lot more punches, but she mixed a lot more punches, too. So it's going to be interesting. To, uh, Katie's trying to gain some territory right now. And they're in the middle of the kitchen. That's, that's a little dicey. Well, she has 40 seconds to go. And Katie, you know, if, if I was Katie Thunder, I, I would feel that I have it. She needs to watch out with those upkicks. 30 yes. seconds left. I, I would feel that I kind of have this fight in the bag, so I have to be a little cautious here what I do. Didn't win the first round, according to the judges, but she certainly had a claim to that first round. And that third Didn't round, win the though. second round. Now in the third right. round, probably done enough. Yeah. Like what she's been trying to do, Katie, is been trying to jump her guard, and, but she has not been able to succeed. Bravo's run out of time. This will go the yeah. distance, and it appears oh, oh. Katie Saul in oh, her there. She mounts her. Now she got the mount. Katie Saul in her Combate Global debut looks to be victorious. Big fist pump to seal the deal. We'll see if it's enough. Still going to be close. We'll be back live, Combate Global on Paramount Plus. Here's your flag. My name is Jose Mariscal. My age is 29. I am from Cicero, Illinois. My nickname is uh, Machine Gun, and I got it from the fighting style that I have. My parents put me in martial arts at the age of six to learn how to defend myself. Uh, I started off with judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and then eventually ran into MMA. Uh, I've just been doing it for 23 years uh, consistently. I never took a break, never had any days off. The only time I had days off was when I broke my hand and just got right back to it and won a title fight. My favorite move is, uh, I could say, uh, a triangle or an armbar. No, I'm two different people. Obviously, the guy in the cage is, you know, going out there to win and destroy. And outside of the cage, I'm a, I'm a people person. I like to represent the people where I'm from. And then my family's from Mexico, so I like to represent them as well.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna win just because of my uh, my patience, uh, the experience I have, and um, my motivation to always keep winning. He's a for sure a game opponent. He's, a, he's gonna be tough. I've seen his record. He's 12 and eight. He's got some finishes, some submissions. So I know, you know, this is a fight like I, like those are the fights I like. The uh, game opponents, guys that you know, it's uh, gonna be a fun chess match. Just get ready to fight. Just be ready to fight. Getting ready for the official decision. Katie Saul for the naked eye. Looks like she's done enough, but you can't take anything for granted. As Rodolfo Roman pointed out earlier, don't let it go to the judges. It's going to the judges. For more, let's hand it to Lupe Contreras. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, los jueces están de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. After three rounds of much more action, the judges are in agreement with identical scores of 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor de la vencedora por decisión unánime. The Queen of the North, Katie! Saul. Katie Saul overcome with emotions. Back-to-back -back victories. The North beats the th South. Canada over Chile. Campbell McLaren inside the Haula with the seal of approval. And you have to feel thrilled for Katie Saul Thunder Rosa. Yeah, I mean, she was the underdog, and she said, like, I'm going to win this. And she came, and she conquered. La Reina del Norte conquered. La Reina del Norte. And smiles for her entire corner and this is a good win for SPG and maybe Katie Saul makes it into the rankings we'll see what happens to Bravo's ranking she was number two coming up that man Jordan Beltran fighting the machine gun Jose Mariscal Overhead shot of La Jaula coming your way next. We will be in the featherweight division. Jose Chepa, machine gun, Mariscal. Jordan, Bull Beltran. We'll get to know the Bull here in a moment. But first, the man from Cicero, Illinois, Jose Mariscal. Closer look, see if he can get a huge win here on Paramount Plus. Uh, I grew up in uh, Cicero, Illinois. My parents put me in martial arts at the age of six to learn how to defend myself. But I grew a passion at the age of nine, made a dream to be a professional fighter, and now I'm living it. Uh, I started off with judo, jiu-jitsu, then started transitioning to uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and then eventually ran into MMA. My nickname is Machine Gun, and I got it from the fighting style that I have. And outside of the cage, I'm a, I'm a people person. Obviously, the guy in the cage is, you know, going out there to win and destroy, and I'm gonna win just because of my patience, uh, the experience I have, and my motivation to always keep winning. Fighting out of Cicero, Illinois. Chicago's been red hot for talent. We saw it with Enrique Baby Bull Gonzalez. Of course, Juliana Peña calling Chicago home. This is a place where MMA champions are coming out of. And we talked about Mariscal, who has been in MMA for a long time. And Rodolfo fighting out of Elevation Fight Team in Colorado. Corey Sanhagen, Justin Gaethje, among others. It just goes to show you, and, and he, this man has taken out some, some elite fighters. Bryce Mitchell, Sean Soriano, and so many more. His opponent, the man they call Bull Jordan Beltran. A practicar MMA, bueno, una cosa me llevó a la otra. Empecé haciendo boxeo, y después conocí amigos que hacían Muay Thai, que hacían lucha, y bueno, conocí que había una forma de combate, ¿no? Que era las artes marciales mixtas, y después, bueno, me especialicé en ello. Eh, mi estilo de pelea actual es agresivo, me gustan mucho los golpes. Creo que eh, mi pelea perfecta es a puro golpe. 
tengo que ganar porque quiero, quiero más de combate, ¿no? Y bueno, solamente hay que ganar, hay que hacer el trabajo, hay que ganar y ya todo lo demás, pues es, es ganancia, ¿no? ¡Bertra! Pues nada, vamos a divertirnos, Chepe, vamos a dar una, una buena pelea. Espero que, que vengas con ánimos de dar show. Inside the Combate Global Circles and Thunder Rosa, he's from Puebla, but he started training to Colina, a 10 hour drive. He wanted to raise his child there, making some sacrifices for his kid, but he still wants to maintain a high standard. And he said that his son and everything has bring, brought him a lot of blessings. And just being here in, in the Jaula is another one. And he just wants to make his family proud and get more opportunities because he's a businessman, man. Sacrificing for his son, also his wife. His wife is from Colina, was a promise he made to her when they decided to make a family. But MMA front and center and a win here in Beltran becomes a veritable candidate in this 145 pound division. Hard hitting bull against a guy who also got some heavy hands in Jose Mariscal as we go head to head. Three years the senior, Beltran has a one inch height advantage and a three inch via the reach. Both guys made it. Below the limit, we are in the featherweight division. Ready to go. Important for these two gentlemen to see where they are in the pecking order. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche. Tres vueltas, división peso pluma. This is the main event, three rounds. In the featherweight division, los jueces son the judges are James Lazaro, Eliseo Rodriguez y Ricardo Celis. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Marcó un peso oficial de 145 libras y un cuarto. He registered an official 145 and one quarter pounds. Su record profesional. 11 victorias con 6 derrotas, his pro record. 11 victories against 6 losses. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado. Chepe Machine Gun, Mariscal. Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo, is opponent in the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white and red. Su peso oficial, 145 libras y 3 cuartos, his official weight, 145 and 3 quarter pounds. Entra a la jaula por vigésima primera vez con 12 victorias y 8 derrotas. He enters la jaula for the 21st time as a pro, with 12 victories against 8 losses. De Puebla, México. Jordan Bol Beltran, el referee from the DR, Tommy Santana. Tommy Santana, the third inside La Jaula. Muy buena noche, caballero. Ustedes son peleador profesional. Espero que se rodeo como tal. Hemos repasado reglamentos, pero una pelea dura, pero limpia. Una pregunta, una pregunta. Jordan Beltran, back in La Jaula for the first time since May. We lost to Samuel Alicat Alvarez. His opponent. Listo. Listo. Peche. Machine gun. Jose Mariscal, who will be in the red shorts. Right from the start, Mariscal is going to push this fake. He, he's going to try to control it right. Right from the beginning. For Beltran. Working that lead leg. Yeah, Beltran, he needs to use that jab to keep Mariscal. He's going to oh. keep coming. Oh, he lost his footing there. Kind of lost that. Uh, but you were right, Rodolfo. He wanted to apply the pressure. He yeah. came in with the two kicks. Ooh. And now Beltran leveraging oh. nicely. And he's Man. got those heavy hands, and they're thundering down. Very heavy And Beltran hands. knows he needs to finish this fight very quickly. He can't waste time on Mariscal. So he knows exactly what he needs to do. You saw how beautifully he put that knee on the left arm <laughs> yes, from Mariscal. He pressured it not, not to allow Mariscal to do anything. Yes, it's, it's just Mariscal is overwhelmed right now in, yep. in this position because he's, the ball. The bull is, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's bleeding, yeah. Is that he's bleeding? Is he bleeding? He's, I don't yeah, think, I think it's eyebrow. Beltran. No, it's his eyebrow. Oh, it is Mariscal. 
The machine gun, it is hurt. Beltan is relentless, keeps coming, and now gets the back of Mariscal as they get back to the feet. Oh, Drops whoa. Him on a suplex. Great takedown. Wow, Beltran is locked in. I don't Another. think Mariscal knew that uh, Beltran had this in a whole bag of chips. He said, uh, a, he said a quick start here, yeah. Thunder Rosa. That's yeah. exactly what Beltran is off to. And Be he yeah, hey, Beltran is here to put a show, put up a show, and he is doing that. He is an entertainer inside the jaula. Uh, whether it's by design or not, he likes to fight that way. He likes to throw punches. He. Was, we were talking about the loss to Samuel Alvarez. Never stopped oh, training oh. since then. Beltran played uh -oh. Mariscal's game. He's got that arm locked in there. Beltran very careful here. Very cautious. Not taking the, the wrong move. move. No, 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 that's exactly yes. what Beltran needs to do. Put up those hips. Pull that out. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Mariscal, you know, he's known for that aggression. So Beltran's like, okay, I can play that game too. Yes. But it was that, that losing of the footing, though, yes. that they really... Yeah, Mariscal is being pretty inventive here to find a different way to get through a little cut. It's a small one right over that right eye, right so next to the eyebrow of Mariscal. It's a little one, Max, but at the same time, we're very early into this fight, and if you keep working on it, yep. could open up a whole lot bigger than that. You just read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. Clubbing those ears. He's staying very active on the bottom there, Thunder Rosa. Speaking of Mariscal. Yes, and Mariscal is staying very calm, very composed. He's definitely, you can see, uh, thinking about his next move. Beltran continues to go. Great yeah. gets there. Oh, oh, could we have here naked. perhaps a rear naked choke? Oh, no, wow. great transition from Mariscal. That was laser fast. Maybe a knee if uh, once Beltran puts his hand up. No, all right, follow through. Both these guys with good chins. Yeah, single these guys, single beautiful leg single leg takedowns. See how he grabbed it and spun around. Oh, those connected from yeah, Mariscal. Textbook. Textbook. How about the ebb and flow of this fight? Oh, it's really fast pace. Oy. Missed. Beltran back on his feet. Look at those clubbing hands. Ooh. Comes in with a knee as well. Gets dropped. Wow. Another takedown. We've seen some great takedowns here. I mean, will you expect less? These this two guys have so much experience. That's what it is right there. It's experience. That's what it's all about. And that's what we're seeing here, here both these guys. Mariscal now is Chepe Machine Gun. Grew up in Cicero, just outside of Chicago. Parents put him in martial arts at the age of six. He fell in love by nine. He's been in it ever since. 23 years of combat sports. Mariscal just keeps throwing those punches. As the bull is trying to go for a takedown again, or defending what he, when he was on the ground, yes. and now he's all, all the way on his feet. We talked about rest moves in an earlier fight. No rest moves here. <laughs> Not for this, guys. Heck no. There ain't no, stop, no rest stop on this highway. Look for that uppercut. Beltran's got those really developed shoulders, muscular builds, strong guy. See how Mariscal likes to position himself using the jab as a distraction, and then he goes to the takedown. Beautiful, like, single leg, man. It's yeah. just, like, textbook. Textbook. Just some side control. Almost still got that leg caught there by Beltran. That's yes, that experience. If Mariska Mar Mar gets in a better position, he can start going for elbows, too. He's just ground and pound, ground and pound. Oh, oh, oh man! Beltran cannot avoid those punches. He waves at the referee. I'm yeah. okay. But you got to be careful. He's taking a lot of damage. But the bull, you know, he likes a good fight, and he said he's, it was going to be a war. So he was not expecting less okay. than this. It's going to take something special to put one of these guys out. Heck yeah. Well, let's see how much of uh, the oxygen level is Still coming into the second round for Beltran. stop Goes and goes a whole round, and finally a stoppage. Ooh, Ooh, calf kick. It's a close first round, and oh. action back one. Explosive. Sensing some frustration from Beltran, who had a good start to that fight. Had Mariscal on the ground, and then Mariscal got up. Yeah. This is where he went down the first time. And if he wanted to finish it, this was the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, he just went in there, and at one point, I really thought Mariscal was in really, really dangerous position, but he was able to overcome this situation. Great takedown, or great suplex. And then Beltran attempting an upkick, and then Thunder, this is when Mariscal just picked up the pace and just took the fight. Yes, and uh, he was ground and pound, sing single legs, and it was, he was very successful. Again, if he would have gotten a little better position, that would have been a lot more damage done to, to the pool.
It was a roller coaster ride for Jordan Beltran in that first round. Had the upper hand, and then he did it. And uh, Mariscal did not give an inch, and he starts the second round right where he left off. Oh, oh question mark kick there. Just from missed there. You felt the wind <laughs> bristle by his face. Nothing over here, my papers flew off. <laughs> Mariscal he's is going, relentless. He's going for the low kicks at both of them. Faint oh, by inside trying kick. to sneak in with that left hand. Oh, oh no! no! Big time from Whoa! Mariscal. Oh, 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 oh. With the punch. The guy is the real oh, deal. Oh, he did man. The, he did the Michael Jackson, man. Do another one, man. You deserve the question mark <laughs> kick, and then you knock out. Wow. An incredible start Man. to the second round. You talk about keeping the momentum from round one. Jose Chepe, Machine Gun Mariscal did it. Improves to 12 and 6. Where's Campbell at? His fifth <laughs> knockout he of went. his career. <laughs> as soon as he's wow. throwing that game. Look at Eddie, are you okay? Look at that. Wow. And then he followed it. Bam! That's it. That's wow. how you finish a fight. Beautiful. 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 Hey, Twitter swear, world. I swear, I, I totally heard that. <laughs> There's your viral. That it's yeah. one of the most favorite moves in <laughs> MMA, but you don't see it finish somebody that often. Wow. We just did. Jose Mariscal with a bullet. A week ago it was Ana Palacios and her arm bar that went viral. I think we have. Wow. The one on offer for tonight, Jose Mariscal with the question mark kick to drop Jordan Beltran, a fighter who doesn't usually get dropped. He can take a lot of punishment, but he couldn't take that one. Tough loss for Beltran, uh, coming off the Alvarez defeat. Prior to that, he has been a pretty successful fighter in combate. Official decision coming your way right now, Lupe Contreras. El referee Tommy Santana detiene el combate con un tiempo oficial de 29 segundos del segundo episodio. Referee Tommy Santana stops this contest with 29 seconds of round number two. Your winner, by way of TKO, el ganador por knockout técnico, Chepe Machine Gun, Mariska. Another Chicago success story. And a man who has started to put some wins together of all kinds. Five knockouts, three submissions. Campbell's inside the haula. He's got another guy with big designs on his shoulders. Oh, yeah. Combate Global live on a Friday. Incredible moments emanating from La Jaula. We'll look back at this fight as Jose Mariscal victorious over Jordan Beltran. This one right here is one for the books, guys. Beautiful finish. Beltran coming in for a minute there. You know, that mistake right there when Ms. Mariscal lost his footing. I really thought Beltran had a good opportunity to finish off this fight very early on. But Mariscal's experience, you know, he has a long list. If you look at his resume of experience with Thunder, and he kept cool, calm, and collective, and he waited in for the great opportunity to shift gears in this fight. Yeah, he was able to regroup. He never he never freaked out. On the contrary, as soon as he saw the mistakes he made, right in there, he fixed them. He went for a couple of single legs and was successful on them, and he was vicious putting his hips down, very heavy, and just throwing bombs as much as he could. And that right there tired him out. You know, I know he said he waved to the to the referee saying, I'm okay. And then that. And then there it is. Woo! That opening was beautiful. That was early on in the second round. First round, he, the, the meat tenderizer. Second round, he time to eat. That made me hungry. <laughs> Jepe Mariscal. Look at that cheeky grin. He knows he did something special. And all of us got to enjoy it. That is brilliant striking from Mariscal, who really was a self 
inflicted wound by slipping that right. gave Beltran the edge. Otherwise, Mariscal pretty dominant here. Yes. Yeah, and, and Beltran knew what he had to do. You know, it just didn't go his way uh, in that chance. And Mariscal, you know, that, that's why I asked him earlier, you know, Mariscal, mm -hmm. if, you look, if you look at the folks that he's competing, not, not to take away anything from his previous competition and opponents, but Mariscal is up there as far as elite fighters that Beltran has taken on. Yes, and we saw it today. I mean, he just made a little mistake and he was able to re recover and he won the fight. Not to be denied this evening, <laughs> Mariscal. Right, here we go, the dynamite is coming in with that kick. It was spectacular. We talked to him in that first round. That, that was an error when he fell. I fell and I, I felt like, oh, I'm actually fighting now. You know, like uh, it was a good wake up call, take out all the jitters and show that I'm here. In ese momento, cuando te llevan al piso y te ponen en malas condiciones, él dice, ajá, me di cuenta que estoy peleando. Me sonó el despertador y dije, ahora tengo que atacar. Ahora, esa pelea la venías trabajando. That kick was not like a lucky kick. You were already dominating the, 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 the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kept the downstairs, you know, view keep it busy, you know, and then I did a question mark kick just to leave, leave my mark out there. Y le dejó la marca definitivamente. Sí, venía trabajando de menos. Además, estamos viendo en estos momentos este nocao es We're watching the knockout, spectacular. Uh, my friends and my family, definitely my, my uh, corner and my teammates back home. Y así definitivamente que estás con tu segunda victoria venida a ganar anteriormente. You just, estás your second victory in a row. ¿Qué viene para ti? What's in the future? Uh, just hopefully more victories, more fights. Uh, I like more finishes on my resume, so I'm going to keep it up. ¿Cómo te definirías como peleador? How do you define yourself as a fighter? Are you aggressive? Do you attract the eye every single Friday for much more action? You know, keep the crowd happy and my corner happy and... Keep that resume, keep going, uh, you know, get it on the winning column. Excelente trabajo. Chepe, Great work. Have some questions, guys. Bueno. The winner's here. And you work to the top. Yep, always. Great, great, uh, great fight. And, you know, it was a great opponent, game opponent, so I knew how to make some good setups, you know, to take them out. Who wants to ask you a question? Come on, Pube. Pube I'm Alvarado, yes. Uh, what kind of question is there? <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> did you work in that uh, kick before you were working in the gym for that kick, or did you just try it tonight? No, I've been training that. You know, I, I'm good at chopping down the tree and then going up high uh, for that knockout. Tranquilo, Rocky, que dice que le gusta darle al árbol que venía trabajando esa patada. Y bueno, ahí estaba. Muchísimas gracias, felicidades. Gran combate estelar esta noche en la jula de combate global. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Oye, vamos a ver a las mujeres. Vamos a ver a las mujeres, muchachos. Vamos a revivir el pasado, como dice. Let's take a look at the, uh, the girls. By the way, it's good that we can go in two languages here. I think most yeah, people right? could, uh, you could That's pretty cool. get by. That's why we are a bilingual culture. And, and I, I got to hit a Mariscal. He needs to teach me that question mark kick. And by the way, Mariscal <laughs> says MMA is an art. I need to be picture perfect. It's beautiful. When he describes mixed martial arts, that was certainly beautiful beautiful Jordan Beltran will tell you something different but Mariscal a true artiste as we look back at what the fight between Katie Saul and Gloria Bravo did this was really close third round though Thunder Rosa it was Katie Saul knowing she needed a big round and she came up with the goods yes she did and I'm gonna tell you guys if you guys are not watching or did this show tonight you're missing out the, the fights were phenomenal and we saw like I said we saw art tonight we saw all art. art fine art fine art violent art violent fine art <laughs> Gloria Bravo couldn't get it going, Rodolfo. She is a submission specialist. Katie Saul didn't give her a sniff. She had a good game plan, moving in, straight forward to cut off Katie from moving around. Uh, but, but it was right here. Those takedowns that definitely gave and impressed the judges to award this fight to Katie, the queen of the North. It was a, the battle of the queens, but it was a Northern queen that took this fight raising that Canadian flag above very proudly. And she was very emotional because she knew she was the underdog and she was able to get the upset. And as you look at the stats here, Max, so and Bravo going at it, the punch is thrown more from Bravo. 
the kicks as well, total strikes, but the takedown, that is what stands out. But the two takedowns from Katie compared to Bravo's goose egg, and that is what impressed the judges. And Miss Katie Soul is going home with a big old W. Ready to celebrate in Canada. Good high volume of strikes for both fighters in a very entertaining matchup. Katie Soul beating the number two ranked Adam Weight fighter in Gloria Bravo. That is the howl of the max. We got one fight remaining. There you go. One fight still to go. And how is it going to top these two? I wouldn't doubt that it it won't deliver. As we see Sandstorm, Jimmy Sandlin, he will take on Eric Petty Montaño. Another big fight coming up Friday. And uh, throughout the summer into the fall, Combate Global, we're not going anywhere. Live tonight here on Paramount Plus. Get to talking. We had so many big moments here already. There is Jimmy Sandlin looking for a third straight victory. Things are starting to fall in place for him. Eric Montaño probably thinking, that's great, but not at my expense. Great veteran here in Combate, who's going to be a very, very tough out. Here he is, Jimmy Sandlin. Last time we saw him, had a victory against Ivan Choco Castillo and Eric Montaño. Got a little difficulty against uh, Martin. He looks like Javier Bardem a little bit, no? Montaño? <laughs> you look, you Good know, compliment. You no, know not that, feeling it? No. Okay. I was just gonna ask Jimmy where did he where did he go to get his haircut just in case I wanna. You know, get <laughs> very the same floppy, one. very. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge transformation, but it's working for him. And wherever you're watching, we saw the question mark kick finish. We saw a triumphant Katie Saul. We saw Anthony Pettis tweet out, "Keep an eye on my guy Eric Mendez," and he was 100% correct. That match was great. Blessing. You got the blessing. What I'm curious to see in this fight between Salen and Montaño is Montaño was having difficulty with his previous opponent with the wrestling. Will Jimmy Salen follow that same blueprint? Or are we going to see some of that striking that he uh, showed off last time around against Ivan Choco Castillo? Big time contest. We have one coming your way, heading towards the top of the hour. Live on Paramount Plus. You do not want to miss a drop because you don't know what's going to happen, but you're pretty sure something great will. Like that. We'll be back. We are back. The, uh, the bridges that connect Miami and Miami Beach, the Venetian, Julia Tuttle, the MacArthur. Takes you right to the port. Takes you right to the port on the MacArthur Causeway. So much happening in Miami. A city that continues to grow and part of the growth, it's the home of Combate Global. One fight here to wrap up the evening. Jimmy Sandstorm Sandlin and Eric Betty Montaño. Montaño can beat you in many ways. Two knockout victories, four via the submission. And yes, Sandlin going for a third straight win. Let's take you into the Jaula and Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Jimmy Sandlin. Jimmy Sandlin. He has won some titles in many places coming out of Carlisle, Ohio, went to Limestone University. Was going to go into the medical fields, but this is his passion and he wants to maintain it. The red, white, and blue over his shoulders. They love him here. He has done great with Combate, and Combate has returned the favor. You want excitement? This guy's going to bring it every time he bring, comes inside La Jaula. Fast paced, great wrestling, but has been feeling very confident with a stand up game. But again, against a guy of Montaño, I will stick to my wrestling because Montaño had some difficulties with that when he took on his last opponent. Victories over Choco Castillo and Ruben Lozano, both in the 2022 calendar year. Su contrario, Eric Montaño. Eric Montaño has been in mixed martial arts quite some time. His first fight in 2008. He's had some big gaps in between. As you can see, he's been with some other big companies representing Mexico. 
USA Mexico again inside the Aula. And sometimes having big gaps uh, in between fights, it could be, you know, a little way to regroup and learn new stuff. To find a, see where I could fix some of the holes. And we saw him compete a couple of months ago. So this is his chance to see what he's been working on. And like you mentioned, Max, this guy, uh, he's, a, he's a seasoned veteran in the world of mixed martial arts. Training with the Bone Breakers in Mexico City, where they have a lot of good training partners for Montaño. Sandlin coming from the road less traveled in the Midwest to come here. Grew up as a wrestler, but this guy has the skills as we look at the head-to-head. -head. Montaño, much taller fighter by three inches, has a three-inch reach advantage. We're at a catch weight of 160 pounds. For the final time tonight, let's hand it off to La Voz, Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo, tres vueltas, a un peso pactado a 162 libras. We continue with much more action this bout, three rounds, at a catch weight of 162 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are, Eliseo Rodríguez, Ricardo Celis y Vicente Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de azul, presenting the blue corner, wearing blue. Marcó un peso oficial de 160 libras y tres cuartos. He registered an official 160 and three quarter pounds. Con un récord profesional de seis victorias y cuatro derrotas. He enters la jaula with a pro record of six victories against four losses. Fighting out of Carlisle, Ohio, Jimmy Sandstorm Sandland. Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido de blanco, is opponent in the red corner, wearing white. Su peso oficial, 161 libras y media, his official weight, 161 and one half pounds. Su record profesional, ocho victorias y siete derrotas, his pro record, eight victories against seven losses. De Tierra Azteca, la ciudad de México, DF, Eddie Perry Montaño. El referee, from the DR, Tommy Santana. Tommy Santana the third inside La Jaula. Muy buena noche, caballero, y bienvenido a su combate global. Hemos repasado el reglamento en la parte de atrás, pero una pelea dura, pero limpia. ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Una pregunta? Yo como te decía ser. Jimmy Sandlin. Eric Montaño. Ready? USA. Mexico, final fight of the evening, live here on Paramount Plus. Two excellent campaigners here in Combate Global, Sandlin in the blue, peppered early on by that straight jab from Montaño. Eric Montaño has great crisp technique with the striking. I wonder if Jimmy, though, will change the levels and go straight down to use his wrestling. That's his bread and butter. Maybe he straight. wants to train something different tonight. Well, he, he's he's a very he's a risk taker, you know, he, and he he likes to try every single art that he has trained in the gym, and he's not afraid to do it. I mean, he's done that in life too. He's changing careers and not afraid of doing anything. So we'll see tonight. Antonio, the, the taller one. one. Yep. And uh, it's Sandlin can always resort to that ground game. Very slow in that delivery. Sandler moving the faster of the two, but Montaño, when he when he strikes, he has a lot of power. Yes, he does. Ooh. That green sand kick. And, and Montaño, it seems like he's just picking him apart little by little. Oh, yeah, these are really precise punches. Montaño setting up with the jab and coming through that big right hand on occasion. Boom, again, right down the clown's mouth, as Juliana Peña would say. And again. those are going in. Yeah, Sanders' nose is really red at this point. Oh, now hitting the leg. This is checking this kicks. a if much I'll... different Montaño than we saw back in October of last year when he lost to Mark Martin. Yeah, if I was Jimmy, I would go straight down to the ground right now. Yes. I mean, he's doing that kick, but it seems a little slow when he's when he's hitting it. Yeah, the, the, the sharpness of the striking, it's no contest, although Sandlin does get a good left hand in there. And the thing is that the, the Montaña is coming in very linear. He's just coming rest forward. So J Jimmy does have that opportunity to move fast-paced. 
Let's go for the takedown. Yeah, everything's connecting there. Montaigne's a taller fighter. He's got the longer reach. And Jimmy's a, a standing target at this point. No a absorbing a lot of pressure. Yeah, he, there's no head movement. None. That's why. Go to the ground. Excellent combination again. Strong lead right hand. No jab required there. Montaigne uppercut. Montaigne has that 20-20 vision, man. Every single strike is yes. just landing. Well, he looks a different fighter again. Uh, sharp, precise, looks like an excellent shape. Sandlin now paying back some. Hits the lead leg. Oof. Oof. Oh, Montano, you can hear it. And, and, and Sandlin is countering with the shots, but the reach of Montano is prohibiting him from connecting. Montano, like so many others, rough neighborhood, needed to lean into MMA to get his life right. Comes into this, eight and seven. Guy who normally finishes fights. And even as Jimmy dodges oh. down and hit the body, he just, he's met with a punch. No, he needs he needs to go for the takedown. He has to. Yeah. Face turning red, and these he has are hard to. strikes. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage right now. Too much. Oh. Sandlin can't get close enough. Well, curious why the corner's not encouraging him. Uh, yeah. I mean, that leg is giving it to you. It's right open, right there. Into the bread basket. Yeah, I think, he attempted, I think he attempted right there. Yeah, he's uh, he's very planted. I mean, like, he did, yeah. like, he goes for a single or a double. Yeah, he can take he can take it. But, Rodo, what's interesting is uh, he fought Choco Castillo. It's a very similar build to Montano, similar skill set. Yeah, you're right. Didn't have issues yeah. there, but he's struggling yeah. with it here. You're right. Choco does have similar positioning. Just stands there and, and stands and bang. Oh, another good right hand, Montano. But then again, though, Max, to give to, to the defense of Choco, remember, he took that fight on Dave's notice. Was he, was, he was vacation. <laughs> he was on vacation. He was out of vacation. Oh. Sandlin had the take down there, Thunder yes. but he relinquished it. I mean, he went for it and he got it. Exactly how it was gonna it was gonna happen. Under a minute to go, it's been a dominant opening round for Montano in white. Sandra kicks are very timid. Uh, right? Very soft, <laughs> very soft. I don't know if he's trying to set up something or well, he, he's not coming in with a hit. It's more like he's doing a little tap. That's why it's, it's important when you do those kicks, you kind of stand up on those toes yes. to, to throw the hip, come all that power. And See? If, if there's something that he's uh, working on, like, I mean, it's going to take some time to, like, perfect it. And if you're using it as a setup, that's fine, but do, do something afterwards. Yes. He's not. There, there we go. Snuffed out, though, by Montano. Remember, this is a catchweight fight. Normally, Sandlin would Ooh. be at 155. Has to come up to 160 to take on Montano, but we will reach the end of the first round. Oh, oh, the oh man. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about Sandlin, though, Max and Thunder, he has heart. Well, there's going to be a lot of coaching here. There should be a lot of coaching. There it is, the replay. Looking back, Montano. He was like a standing t yes. man with punches. Sandlin just looked like a target for him, but towards the end of this round, I kind of saw a little difference here in Sandlin. He did go for the takedown, and he almost kind of picked up the pace. He had to. He had no choice. But the problem is when you throw hailmakers like that, it could be dangerous because you can get knocked out. Couldn't hear the, the corner there, but I think what I grabbed is throw the punches and go down. I think that's what I heard. <laughs> Back here, Jimmy Sandlin, who took quite a, a beating in that first round, smiling, laughing, keeping his spirits up. That's the kind of guy he is, but I don't know if he, if he can take another round like that. Game plan change needs to be in the works here. Now well, he's not going to let him. Now the Sandlin is even bouncing a little bit around on his feet, moving around. 
Hey, I'm dying of little question mark. Well, everyone's, saw that? everyone's asking yeah. questions tonight. I gotta keep these guys up. They gotta teach me. I've been trying it over and over again. They gotta see what the trick is. Get Rosa in there too. She wants to learn it Nothing. as well. We can go learn that question mark kick. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can open you my need, hips that much. You need it in your arsenal. Okay, I'll do it. Good. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will let you know. I'll send you a video. Yeah, there, you right. there you go. Nice. That's another high kick. We'll slide in your DM. <laughs> <laughs> hey now. <laughs> no. There's a takedown. Much better for there Salmon. Montano's been great. He has quelled each and every one of these. Careful with that knee just above the belt. Right, let's see what Salmon here does in his clinch work. Well, this is better. Salmon's at least in a clinch. He's got right. some options. No surprise there with the official scoring of the first round. None whatsoever. So here it is. Montagna was some knees himself. Salen trying to go. Yeah, he saw that from a mile away. He knew that he was coming for the takedown. Montagna then stopping him. Oh! That's tough. Oh, oh. Oh. Great blocking, though. Combination. Yeah, he's Three for a dollar. Salen, though, smart with keeping up those hands at guard. Two for a dollar. <laughs> I hope it was a two for one. <laughs> the old carnival. <laughs> <laughs> Everything route one for Montagna. Man, it, all the shots that Montano is, is hitting, he's he's getting them in the, the court. The thing with Montano, well, Montano's he's, got some swelling in his face too. He does. It's not like Sandlin. He does, but every time that Sandlin's coming in, he's leaving that that face exposed yes. when he goes for the body, and that's where Montano's capitalizing on. See how he comes in? Yes. One takedown attempt in this second round from Sandlin. It's got to be more, because this ain't working. Montano's got the striking game upper hand. Sandlin needs to faint. He needs to faint and go to the ground. Got that right hand, a little bit more power. Doubles up. Whoa. There was a chance. Yeah, because that... Because the person here who's taking the uh, upper hand in his strike fest is Montaño. I was going to say, he needs to be careful with those knees, though. Yeah. He was looking a little tired right now. Watch the pigeons. Eric Montaño, a guy who's earned his keep in mixed martial arts several times with uh, Combate, normally a welterweight at 170, almost getting to squeak down to 155. Yeah, but Montagna, he's just so stationary, but every time you come in, bam, you're met with punches. Jesus. Oh, yeah, Montagna, I, he almost had that leg. Mind you, he has not even attempted to go for any takedowns. He's just sitting there, letting him come in. And I think he knows he's, he's, yeah. he's really, really good right now on scoring card, and he just keeps one twos, one twos, one twos kick. Now Salen is getting some head movement. Ooh. Well, he has no choice. He, he, he should have done that a long time ago. <laughs> Montaño who's had uh, quite the career. He had a couple fights at UFC, and he did have a fight with a name that we may remember for the wrong reasons way back in 2009 when he fought War Machine. Oh, War oh. Machine. Yes, I mean, that's that's a, you see some of the people that he has gone through. It's an old school name. Old school name, and we remember for the wrong reasons, unfortunately but that was uh, in a heyday in the late 2000s. There's another question mark kick. Oh, look at oh, Perry now, the yeah. Knee, they have less than one minute right now, and they still... Oh. Yeah, J Jimmy needs to pressure. He needs to put the pressure on Montano and then switch to level. See, now, Jimmy landed with that right. But Jimmy's still in this fight. Uh, now the fitness he needs to keep, come into play. He, he, he needs to keep pressuring him. He needs to keep pressuring. See how Montagna, when he kept pressuring, he didn't even get his back? Yes. So that's what he needs to be persistent with. Do you, th do you think, Thunder Rosa, that part of the game plan here for Sandlin is to go into the deep end of the pool, get to the third round, and see if the cardio is a little better? Yes. I will do that. Now he's curdled in. At least he's got something to work with here. And Jimmy has that cardio. He does. He, he has does. that cardio. Listen, he's taking yeah. a beating, Rodolfo, but he remains looking pretty level-headed. Body's upright, not breathing heavily. Oof. Maybe the gap closing. 
banking on maybe the door opening. I mean, he, all, the, all the body language says his cardio is good, even waved off some of the water. And this is where it is. We've seen him that in that third round, he picks up the pace. He's going to be pressuring. And we, we've been seeing it every time, either in the, in the first and in the second. And towards the end of those rounds, he picks up the pace and it favors him. He goes for the takedown. He pressures him. Now he has five minutes to do so. We're going to see if Montaño still has the gas to go. Right. Especially how, you know, how well he's been doing with all the strikes. Uh, Jimmy's tiring him out. Back here for the third round. Everything to fight for Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, Thunder Rosa. Eric Montano has thrown so many punches here, <laughs> Thunder, that you wonder if he can keep it up. And if his guard goes down for a second, Jimmy Sandlin's ready to attack. We don't want to change the narrative here, but it appears what Jimmy's banking on. No, Jimmy needs to go get, get on the ground and tire him completely out. Oh, great up kick there. Deep end to of the, the pool time. Sandstorm, and what a brave effort to take this kind of punishment only to try and get the job done in the third round. It's a heavy price to pay, but he's here. Hey. Took a big knee, though. Great start from Jimmy. You see how he has uh, the leg? Yes. He's going to grab onto the leg and Damn keep it down. going. Yep. Good start here for Sandlin. Now he's going to scramble. This is just what how that last round finish where Jimmy had the advantage. Montagna, though. Oh, Jimmy's bleeding out. Not from sure if a clutch was that me or yeah, I, 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 or could it be Montagna? No, it's it's. Well, yeah, and his eyes got puffy as well. They are closing Oof. up. That's that's hard. Great, that's, yeah. Great he takedown, down though. Again. He's gonna have to finish the fight. He lost yeah. those first two rounds. Is that left? It might have been the knee. Yep. Yeah. It's that left cheek, right? Wow. Yep. Look at his eyes are got, like are shutting down both of yep. his eyes. Yeah, it's like he's taking a lot of damage. This is where he say, do not blow your nose. It, yep. He took it on the bridge of the nose, and it's just Oof. it's just lit up his entire face. Man, Salen's a warrior. Yeah. No, every time he brings it, every time he's a, he's a, a very entertaining fighter, has a lot of heart. Oh, and, and, and he, right on the pipe. you know, when they say I leave everything in the cage or the howler, he, he does. Montano's responded well, though, and still throwing. And Montano knows if he continues, there he can go. win on that aspect. And he's really good at defending Got those takedowns. Oh. All right, let's see. And he's pulled up some submissions in the late hour of the fight. Jimmy Sandlin working on something. Mont this will be good to the last drop. Mont Montagna looks a little gas. Here's the open scoring, guys. Well, one judge gave that second round to Sandlin, but Ooh. it's still Montagna with the edge. Sandlin, who fought in the November 2021 tournament, lost to fought Samuel Ali Cat Alvarez, lost to him. Ali Cat Alvarez would lose to Baby Bull Gonzalez, we saw a couple of weeks ago. He had five fights in 2021. This is his third fight in 2022. Talking about Sandlin. Five fights is a lot of fights in Eight one year. Eight fights yeah. in a year and a half. Eight? Eight. <laughs> He was in camp. Heavy all workload. Time. Yep. Those people have one fight a year, and that's it. <laughs> He's got eight. What's the right amount of fights per year? I will say like three. Three? Yeah, that's decent for a good camp and to let your body rest because it takes a lot, of, a lot of damage when you have one Again, fight. Well, he was fighting just two months ago, and then he fought two months prior to that. Both victories. This one is. He's going to have to have a huge comeback to oh make it three God. in a row. He needs to go to the floor. Yeah, is there something when you see a fighter, when you see their eyes shining down, the yeah. blood, the sweat, there and you go. see them tired? Like you just you just feel for them because you know slip. what? Yep. Yes. Oh, that he slipped pretty badly there. That's getting pretty slick there, center of the haula. I mean, Montano has maintained his. I mean, yeah, it's been perfect, but he has maintained his upright stance and he's kept firing. And he's, his his takedown defense has yes. improved a lot, especially with the, compared to the last oh. time we saw him. I, I heard the corner calling for that kick multiple times, Montano's corner, until he got it. I think right now, again, he's a little tired, but he keeps his composure. He's he's not breathing heavy, but you can see in his body. 
don't know if uh, Montano has a future at 155. It would be a huge weight cut. He got it down to 160. But One maybe there is a competition at 170. He looks revitalized. He's fought a great fight. Jimmy's just going to throw everything right here. We, we've seen it many times where this guy just, he's a risk taker. Just a bigger, stronger fighter. Yeah, Montano, he is the bigger dude. Jimmy Sandlin still going, moving forward. But what can work? Still some time here for him to win this fight. Well, he needs to be careful because he keeps, if he gets those... A power punch, he's done to done. See? Upper yep. cut, upper but, cut. but at this time, you know you're losing the fight. You have to you have to take a risk and just hopefully that one of those hooks or overhand rights lands. Amazing Montano staying in the pocket and throwing. Oh! I mean, I don't know if that missed. I believe it missed. Yeah, it missed. He blocked it. And 10 seconds to go here in a just a cathartic victory, it would be for Montano. And Hellmakers are coming, guys. Wow, that's, that, that, that's, that's all he has left right now. Oh. We go the distance. A battle. Two guys dying on their sword out there. That's how much it means. Max, it wasn't because it was my birthday, but this show was <laughs> absolutely amazing. The fights were accelerating, and there was mucho más acción. It's your presence alone, Thunder Rosa. We're happy to have you does bring the heat. We'll take a break, get the official decision when we return. back it's gonna be a, a tough night for Jimmy Sandlin he really took a bevy of strikes it's etched on his face it'll make him feel better if somehow he's able to pull a victory but it looks like a very tall hill for the official decision let's go to Lupe Contreras Los jueces Vicente Rodríguez y Ricardo Celis entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27 Judges Ricardo Celis and Vicente Rodriguez turn in identical scores of 30 to 27. Y el juez Eliseo Rodriguez anotó 29 a 28. Judge Eliseo Rodriguez scores it 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. De Tierra Azteca. Eddie Perry Montaño. That's what it means for Montaño as he dips his toe in the fountain of youth, the 36-year-old <laughs> getting his first victory with Combate Global. <laughs> and that smile says it all. He's got something left in those fists, in those legs, in that heart. Max, you just did the right things today, I swear to God. You just I threw did. under the bus <laughs> of their age, man. <laughs> I'm a big believer in the older athlete, especially when fighting younger ones. The kids have to learn somehow, and they're not going to get an easy night out from the old guard. Montaño, the latest example, as we recap what we saw. Jimmy Sandler coming in here with all the momentum, Rodolfo. This was uh, this was going to be a marquee moment, finding a bigger fighter, but a chance to win a third straight here under the Combate a big, banner. A bigger fighter and an experienced fighter, and you're right. This was his opportunity to show what he's all about. But Montano, he stayed right there, didn't move much, and every time that Jimmy kept on coming in, he just struck away, landing in that uppercut, just straight shots, one twos, jabs, and straights, and Jimmy just couldn't find an opening where he could. Just land away. He did try to land some body shots, but Thunder, every time he did, he was met with those fist of fury from Montaño. Or the knees, as you as we saw. That's why he got caught in the, in the under eye. And another thing, I don't think his strategy today worked out. I mean, he, st he stayed toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody that's better on striking. And he just peppered right? him. Yeah, yes. no, no head movement, too. Not a lot of head movement whatsoever. He did go for the takedown. It worked a couple of times, but Montaño, you could tell that he was doing his homework on uh, Samlin, stopping any potential takedown whatsoever. Yes. 
Sad there night it is. For, for Jimmy, but, you know, Montaña's got, it, got the work done. No doubt Jimmy Sandlin will be back. He's 27. Combate loves having him. He's a breath of fresh air. He's fun to talk to. Uh, Eric Montaño, the silent assassin, but he's always in good shape, but he looked like he was in really good shape. You can see the muscle, the cut, and uh, the that relief. smile. That's what it's all about, Look no? Smile, smile of a winner. <laughs> they put in so much work. You guys know what is required. Maybe the haircut helped Montaño. <laughs> Maybe the extra hair for Sandlin didn't help, but 302 punches. Ooh, That's Jesus. tremendous volume. Wow, keeping a pretty good accuracy along the way. If he throws punches like that, he is going to be one to be reckoned with. Whether yes. it's at a catch weight, more like, I, I think it goes to 170. We see the growing talent there. Conor Luberts, yeah, we'll I know see, we'll uh, see. he'll be coming up soon. We'll get a good chance there. We'll see Marcos Goreda next week. Some good 170 pound. Georgie Medina. Medina, Georgie Medina we saw last week. So 170 where it's at. But if he can get to 155, a six-foot statue S. Montaño, it's a big ass, but he could do some serious damage. Luis Chavez, an undefeated fighter, looking to keep it that way. He is strong. He can fight. And Enzo Perez, the Cuban, looking to get that victory and put that O away for Luis Chavez. A whole stack of great fights all over the card next week. So stick around for that. We are out of time. As always, an absolute pleasure to bring you all the action Ooh. on behalf of our production team, headed by Ari Izquierdo and Victor Bagué. Thunder Rosa, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Rodolfo Roman, my name is Max Pretos. Placido Domingo.